Now, one of the most common animal myths is that mice love cheese. It popped out a long time ago, probably as early as when people started storing food. Since mice are regular visitors to human homes, they were constantly looking for food they could eat. People used to store grains in glass jars. They also kept their meat hanging up high. But they'd lay the cheese on the shelf, which was an easy target for all the unwelcome pantry visitors like mice. So they ate it, because they couldn't reach anything better. But a mouse will definitely more likely go after chocolate or some other sweet thing than the cheese. Who can blame them? Now, flamingos don't really stand in the water on one leg so they wouldn't get cold. This is just a simple way for them to spare the effort. It's exhausting for us humans to stand on one leg. But for them, this is the most stable position possible considering their peculiar anatomy. This pose doesn't require any muscular work. Now I'm jealous. One of the most widespread and oldest myths out there is that ostriches hide their heads in the ground every time they're scared. A long time ago, researchers thought ostriches weren't very smart because they bury their heads in the ground without being aware the rest of their large bodies are still out there, where everyone can see them. In fact, ostriches do it when they want to swallow sand and pebbles to boost their digestion or just turn over the eggs they lay in their nests. And even then, they technically don't bury their head, but put it near the ground. Otherwise, with its head in the sand, the poor thing wouldn't be able to breathe. No reason to think of an ostrich as a frightened bird. Like some other animals, it will flee if it senses there's a danger coming. And in some situations, it'll fight back and defend itself. And that's one angry bird. What do you think is the largest thing a blue whale can swallow? Well, we're talking about the biggest animal ever known to have lived on our planet. It can grow up to 100 feet long with a weight of 200 tons. Its heart is as big as a car, and its tongue can weigh as much as an average elephant. It's easy to imagine a blue whale swallowing cars, people, and even small ships, perhaps. But it's all wrong. The largest thing it can actually swallow is a grapefruit. Its throat can take the size of a small salad plate. Whales feed on small fish, plankton, and marine crustaceans, so they don't need a bigger throat. But we wouldn't be able to survive the juices inside a blue whale's stomach anyway. It would finish us within 15 seconds, similar to how long we'd last in space without a spacesuit. So don't try this. Camels don't store water in their humps. We're talking about animals with extraordinary resistance to some pretty extreme conditions. They can survive even when drinking water only every 8 to 10 days. But not because they have a secret stash on their back. It's because, when they have a chance to drink, they will swallow 50 gallons of water at one sitting. They mostly use it to replenish 30% of their total body weight, an amount they can lose by dehydration. So they lose a lot of water but quickly regain it. Their humps are where they deposit fat, but it's not for producing water. The oxygen camels would need to inhale would cause them to lose too much water because it would evaporate through their lungs. That's why they use fat as a nutritional source for energy. This helps them survive in arid regions and times of scarcity. Now, it's a myth that anteaters vacuum ants using their noses. They don't go around looking for ants and hoovering them through their long snouts. Anteaters have very long tongues. Giant anteaters have tongues that go up to 2 feet long. It's the shape of a strand of spaghetti and covered in spiny hooks and sticky saliva that traps ants, up to 160 times in a minute, which means they eat up to 20,000 insects in a single day. That's a lot of bugs. They open anthills using their claws and then do the rest of the work with the tongue. They don't have teeth, so they only swallow all the insects they catch. Movies might have given you a false sense of security when it comes to dinos. Nope, standing very, very still couldn't save you from a raging T-Rex coming after you. Uh Uh-uh. It's a myth the dino king had bad vision. These beasts may have seen better than modern-day raptors. They had excellent death perception, something present in today's animals such as eagles and hawks. Even if, by some miracle, the dino king can't see you or thinks you're just a small tree or some other object because you're standing so still. They had a pretty good sense of smell. So, the better option would be to run, because the T-Rex is not as fast as scientists used to think, up to 33 miles per hour. Considering their anatomy, they could move at a speed of 12 miles per hour. Anything faster than that would have caused serious bone damage. 
But this didn't stop them from ruling the animal world, because there were plenty of dinosaurs way slower than them, so they didn't have to worry about food. Another misconception states that owls can spin their heads, neither more nor less than 360 degrees. Their head spinning does have its limit, 270 degrees in one direction. Since they can turn 270 degrees to the left and right, owls have a 540 degree range of motion. Don't worry, if you touch a butterfly's wings, the animal won't lose its ability to fly. It will survive, despite the common myth that says the opposite. Butterfly wings have scales. When you touch them, some scales might shed off. But it's not a bad thing, because they shed off naturally, too. Because of sheddable scales, they can escape more easily if they get stuck and trapped in spider webs. Now, the next myth has inspired many movies, books, and TV series scenarios. But no, wolves don't howl at the moon. They typically howl at night, true, but because that's the period of time when they're most active. They'll also look up while howling since this helps the sound travel. That way, other wolves will hear them from around 6 to 7 miles away. And that's why they howl in the first place, to communicate with each other. They make specific sounds for a certain situation. For example, to help a wolf that lost its pack find its way home. The moon just happened to accidentally be there while wolves were communicating. Okay, giraffes only need 30 minutes of sleep a day. That's another myth. They sleep about 4.5 hours daily. It's not that unusual for animal species that are most active during daylight. Studies also show giraffes usually lay down to sleep for less than 11 minutes at a time. Many people believe moles are blind. These small, burrowing mammals actually can see. It's just their vision is really poor and only adapted to recognize light. They're also colorblind. When they're searching for food and navigating the dark underground, these creatures mostly rely on their touch and sense of smell. Now, their sense of touch is sharp, which is why moles can feel nearby vibrations of activity. This helps them avoid danger or find their next meal more easily, like millipedes, worms, centipedes, and other invertebrates. Yum! They're really fast at digging and can dig a couple of inches per minute. In the winter, Animals hibernate not because it's too cold for them to be outside, but because there isn't enough food during that period. When an animal is in hibernation, its heart rate, body temperature, breathing, and other metabolic activities slow down significantly. That's how they conserve energy. Chipmunks, bats, turtles, snakes, they all hibernate during the winter, which saves them energy for other seasons when they get more active and are capable of getting more food. I'd say bears too, but they're not the true hibernators. If you try waking one up during the winter when you believe the animal is sleeping, you might end up having a bad time. Now, they do slow down, which means they sleep for extended periods of time. They're still not asleep for the entire winter season, and you can easily wake them during their sleep, so let's not. Now, don't believe myths. Earwigs won't lay eggs in your ears. Yup, despite their name, they're not that interested in your ears. Well, at least, there's no evidence they'd want to go there. They prefer to spend their time in dark, moist places, such as under tree bark or in soil. So, your ears are off the hook. Psst, run! Really? It's not safe out there. There's a saber-toothed tiger looking around. You better be careful. What are you doing? Don't peek! Okay, just one little bit. How's this possible, you ask? That's because you're in virtual reality, of course. These cool but very dangerous-looking big cats were alive during the last ice age. What if they decided to show up at your doorstep out of nowhere? Knock, knock! A saber-toothed tiger is waiting for you to buy its cookies. Meanwhile, the coelacanth, this massive-looking fish, comes from a lineage that's been around for over 300 million years. We thought they didn't exist anymore until 1938, that is, when a live coelacanth was found again. Since then, they've been roaming the waters of the east coast of Africa and the waters of Sulawesi, Indonesia. Man, I wouldn't want to go for a swim and meet one of these fellas face to face. Their jaw has an intracranial joint, which means their mouth opens up by a lot. This is so they can eat large prey, like me. Not good. They're huge, too. 
Imagine a fish that's as long as you're tall and weighing as much as an average human. The takahe, a flightless bird, was thought to be gone in the year 1898. They're very cute, small and multicolored, usually not taller than your knee. But picture this. You're out for a hike in the Murkison Mountains. Looking around, you spot the bird you thought was extinct. But there they are, as happy as ever, surviving and chilling. A whole colonies of takahes was indeed found just 50 years after they were pronounced extinct. Good job, tiny little birds! A singing dog. Ever heard of those? Riley does sing sometimes when he's bored or hungry, but these are real performers. New Guinea singing dogs. They've been only recently discovered again in the wild for the first time in 50 years. Still, they were never completely extinct to begin with. New Guineans made sure they were safe next to them. But in the wild? Very rare and hard to catch a sight of. Look, there goes one. The New Guinea singing dogs are called so because of their famous high-pitched singing. They sometimes sing together, too. A dog choir of sorts, where they all howl together. I bet they sing better than I do in the shower. Not going far from this area, we have bats. But these ones are sort of different. You see, their ears are enormous. I guess that's why they're called the New Guinea big-eared bats. Clever. The species was found again when one of them was accidentally caught in a bat trap. Until then, I guess they were playing hide-and-seek with us, because up till 1890, they had been thought to be gone. They're still not out of the danger zone because of habitat loss. Imagine you discover a fossil of a species you thought had been extinct for a long time. Yet, two years later, a whole living group of said species is found. Well, this is exactly what happened in 1977 with the Mallorcan midwife toad. It's sort of brownish in color with darker brown that makes up its skin spots. Other than that, it's just a small toad with googly eyes. The group of live toads was found close to where the fossil was on the island of Mallorca. There aren't many of them left, about 500 in fact, and as of right now, they're declared vulnerable by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. Now, are you a fan of tortoises? You will be when you take a look at this huge beauty. It's called the Ferdinanda Island Galapagos tortoise. It hasn't been seen since 1906, but on February 17, 2019, we were finally able to look at one of these beautiful creatures. It's probably out there with a few of its mates right now, but they also don't allow themselves to be seen. We only know they exist because there's a few tracks and scents. With yet another frog, we have the horned marsupial frog. They're out and about in Ecuador, in the Chaco Forest to be more specific. They're called this way because of their distinctive horns directly on top of their eyes. You know the pouch kangaroos use to carry their offspring? Well, the female horned marsupial frog also has that, except it's on the back, so it acts as sort of a backpack. They develop their embryos there, and when they're ready to come out, they hatch as complete infants, unlike regular frogs where they start out as tadpoles. One more toad, the starry night toad or harlequin toad. They're black and covered with loads of white spots all over them. Lost for 30 years, it was discovered back in 2019. Picture them as big bodyguards, water bodyguards to be exact. Oh, that's a very big toad on your screen. Well, for the Arawako people, that's exactly what they are, guardians of water. They also have their own name for them, guna. Sounds like a cheese. When scientists found them yet again, they came across 30 of these little creatures. But initially, they were expecting only one. Well, what a nice surprise. Here's a tiger for you, although it doesn't quite look like your typical tiger. It's called the Tasmanian tiger, and it seemingly disappeared since 1936. But then, out of nowhere, people started seeing them out there in the wild just five years ago in 2016. They sort of resemble dogs more than tigers, or a fox maybe. Just take a look at its muzzle. Maybe even a mix of both. Then, a few others started popping up too. And if you happen to think you're seeing one right in front of you, but you're not quite sure, 
check if they've got stripes on their back. They're definitely out there, but still technically marked as extinct by the IUCN. Okay, picture a horse that looks straight out of a movie scene. Tiny, gorgeous fur, very well behaved. It's tiny, but it's not a pony. It's a Caspian horse. They have an interesting backstory to them. They were discovered by Louise Leyland, who got married to an aristocrat in 1957. Having moved to Tehran, Iran, she didn't quite like how the horses behaved there, so she took matters into her own hands. She took a few people with her, and off they went to the Caspian Sea Mountain. And in there, they found three of these beautiful tiny little horses. Now well, that's how the story goes. Coming up next, a possum that was found in an unexpected place. Guess where? You have three options to pick from. Hiding in a ski resort, in the Australian outback, or in someone's apartment in the bathroom. Which one do you choose? You have three seconds. The right answer is a ski resort. Yes, this possum is called the mountain pygmy possum, and it's originating from Australia. So far, there are three different living populations of this tiny possum, but it was believed to be extinct until just 1966. There are fewer than 100 of them, so the IUCN has marked them as critically endangered. Also from Australia is the night parrot, an absolute delight to birdwatchers. Very beautiful, yet mysterious. These little fellas live in very remote areas. You can probably count on the fingers of your hand how many times these birds have been seen since they were found again in 1979. That's how rare they are. Have you ever seen a pygmy tarsier? Neither have I. It was only in 2008 that three of them were caught. Scientists don't really want to lose track of their movements again, so what they did was gift them with tiny little collars. This way they can live their life as happy as ever and will know they're safe. The last one I want to tell you about is the tree lobster. But as the name might mistakenly tell you, they're not really lobsters. They're just big black bugs with huge legs. Their extinction story is a sad one. In 1920, a cargo ship got stuck on Lord Howe Island, and it had rats aboard. These rats fled the ship and ran straight to land. Even though tree lobsters are bigger than most insects, they're still relatively small compared to rats. The poor things never stood a chance. Still, in 2004, life shone again for these distinct critters. A pair of Australian scientists were out and about on the island and came across 24 of them. All of them were living beneath one single shrub. Hey, if there's enough space for everyone, it's not small, it's cozy. Bottom line, it's better to be distinct than extinct. Don't you agree? <laughs>